Okay, um, so we know that you've been doing music for ages now. Um, you started, I think, when you were 15? That's right. That's right? Yeah. How did you start to become a musician or to, to DJ at all? Um, just through the love of music. Um, I've been in the music since I was a very small child and, you know, I discovered punk rock at a very early age. Just through, I've, I've, I've got nine brothers and sisters, so mm -hmm. I, always, I was the youngest of ten, so there was always, you know, I had a great education from a very early age in music and I was just very, very, very fortunate to have older brothers and sisters who were very much, I, uh, you know, I was always a collector of music, whether it was punk rock or rhythm blues or, you know, psychedelia or, you mm -hmm. know, um, just a, a, a wide variety of music that I just became obsessed with from a very early age. So was it, at that time, was it more the local bands at Belfast or was it more mainstream music you were interested in? Uh, it was all pretty underground music, really, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like bands like, well, you know, like bands like The Clash and, 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 yeah. and you know, Public Image Limited and then into the whole kind of 60s sort of scene, like, you know, bands like The Creation yeah. and, you know, The 13th Floor Elevators and The Strange Loves and, you know, a lot of much more rare music. Did you also start playing instruments or did you...? Well, I come from a kind of DJ kind of background. Yeah. So my, 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 um, my background stems from actually just mixing completely different styles of music and that got me into music production, working with like electronic music, like with like drum machines yeah. and sequencers and synthesizers and stuff like that. Stuff that didn't, uh, a much uh, like a deeper kind of um, sampling, yeah. you know, that was my background. Okay. D if someone would have told you back when you were 15 that you would one day get on to do soundtracks for films like Ocean's Eleven or Cherry Bomb, would you have believed them? Oh no, not at all. I would have just laughed at them really. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it, making music for films wasn't even a dream for me. It was beyond that. It mm -hmm. was, you know, it's just something that kind of happened. Um, so basically, um, you know, it's just something that evolved. I, I did. I, I really didn't see it coming at all. You know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was. You know, it was just one Pretty of those. Uh, just happened like that, in a way. Yeah, just something that kind of really happened. Um. But it wasn't contrived. Or, you know, it just happened. Like I fell into film music. Yeah. Because people, you know, said that my music was very sort of cinematic. <laughs> you've done loads of music for films, and you've also said that your albums are influenced by music, uh, by by movies. What is it that makes it so exciting for you to bring mov movies and music together? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's just. I've all. You know. I, you know. I don't think that's quite true. Um, I kind of feel that in the past I've done that. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, recent album, like my last album, The Holy Pictures, was very, was very much inspired by my family yeah. and my friends and, you know, and Belfast, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't really know why like, my music has a cinematic kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's an emotional thread that runs through it, but, um, you know, in the past I have, but I consider everything I do to be kind of different yeah. from the last thing, um, and, you know, I think my music is influenced by so many things, not just by cinema. I mean, mm -hmm. it has done, and it has been influenced by cinema in the past, but not all the time, so... Um, you know, there's certain things I think you, you, you can't really explain yeah. when you're sort of, you know, making music. Is why I, I it think comes. my music comes from so many different places. Mm -hmm. it, it would be, you know, I would be lying if I said that it all had a very, you know, it was all inspired by cinema because, it, you know, the answer is it's not.
Yeah. Um, from what I've read of about uh, what influenced you on the last album, um, you said that it was things like family, friends, uh, loss, love, and so on. It sounds a bit like what Cherry Bomb is about. Is that true? Or would you say <laughs> it, it is in a way? No, not at all. Like Cherry Bomb is a coming of age film about three sort of 15, 16 year old kids mm -hmm. over like the period of a weekend. Um, no, I'm talking about my album is very much about loss and mm -hmm. You know, losing my, you know, my parents, mm -hmm. and you know, my, having a family of my own, about friends that have inspired me. Um, some of it's actually about friends that I've lost as well, um, and it's also pretty much about you know Belfast as a city and how mm -hmm. that's kind of shaped me. But okay. you know, Cherry Bomb is definitely um, a completely different kettle of fish all together. Okay. Um, so as we're on the topic of Cherry Bomb, when did you start working on the on the score? I think uh, the directors were, got the script when in two thousand six, I think it was. Yeah, we have always kind of been working on it and thinking about it and kind of you know if I if I've had an idea that I, you know like a song idea, I'd have send it to them and you know mm -hmm. some of those ideas got great reactions and some of them not so great you know and we built on the on the on the on the tracks that were kind of quite exciting and you know like things like goodbye friend seemed like yeah. a really obvious choice um she brings the rain by ruth was a very yeah. early sort of choice that we were all very excited about i mean ruth the track she brings the rain was kicking around a long time even board even before the idea of Cherry Bomb was conceived. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're always talking about ideas and, and, you know, this would be great for a film or that would be great for a scene in the film, but it's also about finding the right film. Yeah. And when Cherry Bomb was developing, you know, Glenn and Lisa started to sort of, you know, put some of the ideas that I'd given them and started putting them up against the moving images and some of them worked absolutely incredibly well and, yeah. and, 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 and some didn't so it's just a process of kind of seeing what sticks and what doesn't and you kind of when you're working on a film and you're working with music on a film you kind of feel your way through it you know yeah. there's no kind of like master plan yeah so you it, it wasn't yeah, that it, it's something about you know you collect you know you collect feelings and uh, and uh, you know for the project and when something kind of, you know, when you hear a piece of music, there's just a, a little kind of light goes on in your head that just makes you think, oh, well, that, that could be, you know, that might be great for um, for the film or this might work in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of just, uh, you, know, it's a, you know, it's a process that doesn't really, um, you know, there's no real, you know, so it's not like that you get the script and you sit down and you think oh, which song could I use for this and that scene well that happens sometimes but not all the time you know it's a, it, it's a process mm -hmm. you know it's kind of there's things that you think might work and they actually don't and there's things that you think would do work and they work absolutely incredibly well mm -hmm. okay. you know yeah. it, it, it's a process but when in a film like Cherry Bomb as well it's not like working on something uh, like you know, like a like a big Hollywood film where there's no there's you know limitless funds mm -hmm. to kind of choose, you know. So we we had to be really use our imaginations in Cherry Bomb, and you know because we 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 obviously you know it's not a it, you know it's not a huge budget of a film, no. so we had to be very imaginative in terms of not just the songs and the, you know the whole style and feel of the film but also sort of you know our, our sort of budgetary constraints you know yeah so how much were you were you, were you just responsible for the soundtrack because you and uh, Lisa and Glenn you work very, very closely together did you do anything else on the on the film 
as a whole, or was it mainly the soundtrack? Um, I'm actually in a scene, I'm, I'm actually playing Rupert Grint's father. You play Rupert Grint's father? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I've got, I've, got, I've got red hair as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. So you got so, to play him? Just, just a little joke. Okay. Um, no, I'm very, was very much involved with the music, and that is, that is all, really. Um, you know, it's very much, you know, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, I work very closely with Glenn and Lisa, as, you know, we are a team. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we talk <laughs> about things. But when you're in the middle of making a film, it's really hard to kind of any have any other outside communication because mm -hmm. you're actually just so busy and so involved in you know a very hectic routine yeah. that is like sort of you know twelve fourteen hours a day. So um, I, I got much more involved in the kind of post production to the end of things. Yeah, were you on set at all? I um, just once. I mean, I, I was actually really busy working on another film. Um, mm -hmm. While they were shooting um, Cherry Bomb, so I, I, you know, I only got a glimpse of 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 what they were doing. That was quite towards the end. Okay. Um, there's on the soundtrack. There's the song Cherry Bomb, uh, which is a cover version from Fly K Killer, oh. um, and they they told us that um, you asked them to do a cover version. Did you also ask them or tell them which way you wanted it? Um, well, no, I mean, I just basically told them to kind of be true to the tempo and be true to the song. Yeah. I think there's, I think when you cover a song, you, you have certain rules that you have to apply to. And, you know, we wanted the song, you know, we didn't want to just do a, like a complete remodel. Mm -hmm. we, wa we wanted to kind of be very true to the original. Um, rhythmically, uh, musically, and mm. lyrically. Okay. And did you did you plan to do a cover version from the very beginning, or did you at, at some point think we're going to use the original? No, I mean, at, at one point there wasn't, we weren't even going to have the song in the film at all. Okay. Um, but I think, you know, as the whole film gathered momentum and they were very much in the kind of the dub stage, um, You know, mm -hmm. they had they had they had shot a scene where, um, where one of the kids is actually singing the song, but we had an option not to use that. Okay. But I kind of just we all just kind of felt that it, you know it's pretty important that it's actually in there. So I asked Steve um, and and Patty who are, I've got the kind of like punk electro kind yeah. of band Fly Killer. Would they do it? cover like a cover version because I felt that they could actually sort of deliver on that front. So their cover version is pretty much based on one of the three singing. Yeah, it's a, it's it's very much based on the Runaways version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, there are many many bands from Belfast or artists from Belfast, and you've worked with with the majority of them in the past was there one band or, or more bands that you had never heard of before no i know them all like belfast is a small city you know mm -hmm. um so it, it, it it's kind of like you know you know pretty much everyone here okay But, uh, you know we we weren't doing any favors to anybody you know we we, we chose the music that's in the film totally on merit and totally on the on the strength of uh, of the work and the fact that it was ideal for the film mm -hmm. so um and it's a belfast film you know it's 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 set yeah. in belfast it would have been very wrong no. um, and very weird not to have you know local bands local local artists especially yeah. when there's just an abundance of great ones yeah You know, people like Robin Shields and Cashier Number Nine and stuff. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you plan to use local bands from the very beginning, or did you? Did it just happen that way? Sorry. 
Did you plan to use local bands only, or did it just happen that way? No, it was always going to be a mix. I mean, it was always going to be like a true representation representation of what sort of younger kids are into mm -hmm. I mean what you got to you know you know the, the beauty of living in 2008 is the power of the internet and kids have so much access yeah there's so much different music from like around the globe but they're also very in tune with what's going on locally so we just wanted to be true to the kind of modern day local kind of teenager who is into like a, such a, a variety of music yeah and it's it's great that we get to listen to it all on MySpace, most of the songs at least. Yeah. <clears throat> is there, considering the entire soundtrack, is there one song where you would say this is the song that sums up the film? Would you say each song is specific for its own scene? Um, no. I mean, no, it's hard to say, and I don't think I should tell you anyway because you're just fishing for uh, for, for, <laughs> for information. <laughs> um, no, not really. I mean, you know, all the songs have their very much have their own place within different parts of the film, and they mm -hmm. all serve a purpose to, um, you know. I mean, uh, she brings the rain, maybe by Ruth. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I think all the songs really serve. Um, their purpose to write the film. Okay. Is there one song which you would say fits Michelle and one for Malachi and one for Luke? Um. I, pr I suppose there are, yeah. Which ones? I'm not telling you. You're not? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see the film. Okay. Um, have you seen the film? Yet, the I've seen it a hundred times. Hundred times. Yeah, well, more than that. You know, when you're working on a film and you're doing music to it, you see it a lot. You know. Yeah. So, can you say something about Rupert Grint? What he's like in the film? He is. You know, to, to be quite honest, I was completely gobsmacked. He gives an absolutely incredible performance, and his Belfast accent is flawless. Really. Yeah, his Belfast accent is better than some accents, some Belfast accents from Belfast actors that okay. I've seen over the years. Okay. Uh, it's very natural and very soft and, and, and kind of unforced, you know. Mm -hmm. People sort of think that people from Belfast talk a certain way, but like many cities, like any city, there's like lots of different sort of dialects. Yeah. So it's kind of... You know, he really nailed it. I was really, you know, he gives a very kind of subtle performance, but I was really, really, really impressed by him. And uh, Robert Sheehan and Kim Nixon? What about their... Yeah, yeah they're all good. Uh, you know, the, you can't really fault the performance in the film. Everyone yeah. has done a really great job. Yeah. Um, we know that Rupert Grant is also very, very much into, into rock music. Uh, do you know if he got interested in some of the bands on the soundtrack? I have no idea. I've never met the guy. You've never met him? No. So no playing his father then? No. That was a joke. Okay. Alright, have a good time in Berlin. I will not be there because I'm working on a oh. film, but have a great time. Yeah.